Thank you, Father, who you are. Thank you that we can enjoy one another here. And, uh, ah, Lord, that in your presence that we can just be, be. Help us, Lord. Teach us how to have the wisdom as wise virgins and uh, to take time in your presence to desire the extra oil, but to, to go with it and give us the grace to understand how to be filled with the extra oil, Lord. We need your wisdom, and we thank you for that, Father. Thank you for the honor that we can be, each one, a temple of the Holy Spirit, but that we can become a spiritual house where you are so welcome, so welcome to come and do that what you want to do. Forgive us, Lord, for having relationship with robbers. Forgive us for allowing robbers, the thieves, into our hearts to steal that what belongs to you, Lord. Make us faithful, faithful stewards. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. We're talking about the waiting. Let's trust that we will be finished with the session. Amen. Okay. But please get the teachings of 2017. I really believe there's a lot that is very prophetic for this season. And uh, I want to challenge you for in the holiday that you will enjoy your time with God. That you will make sure you see that special opportunity when you sit there. Come and sit here on the farm somewhere in the field. Go and sit on a mountain. Go and sit at the sea. And see the stage God will create for you sometimes. Just to be with him or just to go and sing him a song. If you see a very nice rock out there, go early in the morning. Go and stand on that rock and look up and say, Father, I'm singing you this song. And then you sing this song to him. And then you get off the, the rock and you go home. I'm serious. Uh, in, in the past, I've enjoyed sometimes that so intensely of just making that special moment. You see something nice, a nice tree, this, or just go early in the morning on the beach and uh, go and sing the song or read the psalm as a prayer unto the Lord and then go home. Finish. Just take that five minutes. And sing the song to the Lord, and get off, and go. I'm serious. You will remember that special moment, that you just went there for that reason, to sing your father that one song. Nice. Okay, we are, will be waiting through prayer, prayer, prayer. House will be called a house of prayer. Great, we will be waiting through what we do with our thoughts. Take it captive. Meditate on the word, okay, not just memorizing, but do it with the Holy Spirit so that my soul, my emotions, my thoughts, my will will find the rest. I will be at a place of rest because we hope in the Lord, we hope and we wait for the Lord. A lot of times in the Bible, some translations they translate wait with hope. It's amazing. So, actually, with our year word of hope, it's, uh, I just realized it's excellent how the Holy Spirit lead us about waiting, waiting. There's a waiting with hope. There's a waiting that is actually out of, I quit. And then sometimes say, no, I'm, I, I've given it over to the Lord, but actually I just quit on it with no faith. But waiting is active. Waiting is not just sit back and do nothing. That's laziness. Let's not confuse peace with laziness. Hello? But in the waiting, there's an expectation. In the waiting, there's prayer. In the waiting, there's me dealing with my thought life aggressively. And to get into the Word, meditate, eat. When the Word talks about uh, eat, eat. If, eat my words. Eat the scroll, the prophets. Are you with me? It's something so much actually more than just memorizing. Remember, just memorizing Pharisee you will be, full of religion. But meditating is something so much deeper, so much deeper. And um, may God help you. Um, because we too many times ponder 
and uh, yeah, and have intimacy with with other type of thoughts that's not from God, not from God. May God help us. Amen. And thirdly, we said attitudes. I watch. The thing about watch. You remember also, I know, <laughs> quickly, you remember, okay, Micah 7.7, 7. the other one is Zechariah, is it 6.12? Nobody's going to tell me. It's 6 verse 12. It says, I watch, I look at, I see, I behold. No, not see. What's the other one? I watch, I look at, I keep in sight, and I behold. The man, the man, capital letter, the man who will build his house, who will build his house. So the attitude with the watching. My brother, my sister, your attitude will determine what you will see. Next year we will look at that. Um, we will look at that with a year word of see what he is saying. See what he is saying. I can say a certain sense, and all that you see is condemnation. All that that lady sees performance. All that that lady sees, justification. Yes, I told that my man, or I told that lady long ago that she must look at this. And there's somebody sitting here, but all that she's seeing, God wants to draw me closer. I'm going to deal with this thing, and I'm going to come closer to God. He's awesome. I love his word. I love his word. I take his word. God is treating me as a son. That's wherefore I'm given Patterns for life. That's what we call discipline. Amen. Are, are you with me? So my brother, my sister, your attitude, but it has to do with your attitude. That will determine that what you see now, what you receive now, as you are waiting on God, you're giving this hour, or this hour and a half, or this three hours, as you are waiting on God, you're not just hearing what I'm saying. You just hear what I'm saying. You're in some other religious performance. But if you cannot just sit here because of some other religious performance, but you are sitting here with a waiting, then you are, I watch. I watch in hope for the Lord. Because you have hope, you watch. You look at, not look at me. You look at the man. You keep in sight. That's that focus. You remember we talked about it? Keep in sight is there is such, there's a lot of other stuff that I could look at now, but I choose to keep in sight. What? Where's he? There, 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 I keep him in sight. Are you with me? And with all of this, it's because you have a certain attitude in your waiting. Attitude in your waiting. By getting a certain attitude, you say, I'm waiting on God. I have a negative attitude. I'm waiting for something bad to happen. I have an attitude in where I fear. Where fear is not just something wrong in my soul. I must get ministry so that the fear is gone. No. In fear, there's an attitude. When God just commands you, say, don't fear. Huh. I must first share my heart and get secure and somebody must counsel me. And there's, Yeah, many times it's, it's necessary. But there's also just a command, don't fear. Hello? Because his love is there, his presence is there. Uh, 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 so in that is, I have also an attitude to fear. And with that attitude, you will wait for something to happen. You have an attitude of bitterness. You will expect something to happen. You are waiting for certain things to happen. So attitude, very, very important in your waiting. It's part of the package of waiting. So if somebody has an attitude, ask him, what are you waiting for? You're waiting for what to happen? Somebody discouraged? Attitude. Oh, nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to happen. You with me? God's going to help us in Jesus' name. So, I will watch in hope. 
I will not say, I'll pay you back for this wrong. I will wait for the Lord, and he will help you. He will destroy that guy. No, 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 he will help you. Uh, yoke upon him. Yeah, ease. What? Light, easy. And when you take his yoke upon yourself, light and easy, if you what? If you learn. If you have an attitude, a teachable attitude, teachable attitude, then you will learn. Love is patient. And uh, you can do all the right stuff, but if it's not in love, if there's not an attitude of love, everything is one major religious rubbish. God's going to help us. Number four. Number four. Four, five, six, seven. There's seven. Good. Number four. To wait. To wait what? The royalty guys just write down, hey? Number four is Faith. Faith. You are waiting with faith. If you don't have faith, you are not waiting. You just gave up. You really need faith. Many times we say you must step out in faith. The, the righteous will walk by faith. Yes, in your walk, in your lifestyle, you need faith. But to wait, you need a lot of faith. For the whole church, Paul says, encourage one another, Maranatha, God is coming soon, Jesus is coming soon. Encourage one another to do what? To have an attitude of faith. Uh, encourage one another to wait. To wait. But for that waiting is faith in the future. By faith you believe God will speak to you. By faith you believe he will be there. By faith you believe his presence will come. So it doesn't mean, that if you don't deal with faith, and with what is that? Get into the Word, because only with the Word, you don't just choose faith. No, you choose to get into His Word, and that will produce faith. You, don't, you, cannot, you, cannot, you cannot just make a decision to walk by faith. It's impossible, because the faith comes from the Word. So your decision is to get into the Word with the Holy Spirit, and it will produce faith. It will produce faith so that you understand how to wait. But many times people who cannot wait in faith, that's sometimes in the past, not in the future anymore. We mess up because we couldn't wait with faith anymore. So many guys in the Bible even, they couldn't wait anymore. They feared that this could happen and then they did something. You just start to take control of the situation because of the fear, because your faith failed you. You couldn't stay with the word, stay with the word, stay with the word. The man of faith. Hello? That had to wait. What was the biggest thing with Abram? The biggest test of his faith was to wait. Hello? And he's our father of the faith. Abram. Okay? And then his wife just said, come on, man. Come on. And Hagar and Ishmael. Because of not waiting anymore. So I give up in the waiting by faith. And Ishmael is there. May God help you. I remain. Everybody say, I remain. So he says, I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of God. Therefore, I will wait for the Lord. Be strong, take heart, and wait for the Lord. Psalm 27, verse 13 and 14. Write that down, please. Psalm 27, verse 13 and 14. So when we are waiting on God, when you have your time with God, when we're going to have time with God, uh, it seems to me tomorrow, um, then make sure you do it with faith. You feel, I'm tired. You step out by faith. And you take your focus, you put a focus in by faith. Because this year, my brother, my sister, you're going to hear from God. You know, this year, even more. Before next year, you're going to hear, and your day words even going to be so much more accurate than ever, ever before. I believe, I trust we are taking the extra oil when we'll have the retreat in, in April. There's some expectation in me about then. You know when you, 
it, it, yeah, I believe it happened with you, eh? When you stand at a place and you just know that you know there's someone around the corner. You don't see a shadow, you see, you hear nothing, but you just know. Anybody who, who, there's some? You just know there's somebody. Somebody in the dark even, you know? You just know there's somebody there. Now, <laughs> I want to say that's something I just experienced. I just know something is around the corner. It's not, I step out in faith, it's just, I... And so, come with an expectation, make sure you are here with that retreat. Because leading up to that and in that season, God is just going to do some amazing stuff. But lay a foundation now in your waiting, please, as wise virgins. Amen. Are you with me? I remain, I remain confident. Yeah, that's a decision. Some guys are confident, but now you can discar be discouraged. I'm confident or I am discouraged. No, I choose. I will remain confident of what? That I will see the goodness. Therefore, I will wait. So the command, wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart. Why? Because I am waiting. And wait for the Lord. All right. Stand at my watch. Okay, everybody know that one. Habakkuk 2, verse 1 and 3. I will stand at my watch, and I will look to see what he will say to me. Though it linger, though it linger, linger, or far it tight, taking time, wait for it, wait for it. I will see what he is saying. And even if it takes time, I will wait for it. Amen. Is he me? Okay, you have that one. Habakkuk 2, verse 1 and 3. Then Psalm 59, verse 10. Let's quickly go with that. I watch for you. You, God, are my fortress. And then the last one, Romans 10 to 17, we talked about that. Faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word about Christ. Okay, Romans 10 to 17. The next one, number five. We are waiting on God quickly. First one is what? Prayer. Second one? Thoughts. Third? That's good. Attitude, number four. Faith, number five, will be opportunity. 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 You must see the opportunity to wait. I must see, you can see today, but you decide, this is not my real, real opportunity to connect with God. Do you believe that tomorrow morning you can connect with God like a long time ago? Not like you didn't, but you understand what I'm saying. Can you see that there is an opportunity? Can you believe? Can you see that this retreat is opportunity to wait? Opportunity with God. Okay. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like, like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Isaiah 40 verse 31. Isaiah 40 right there. Isaiah 40, verse 31. Okay. It's opportunity. Waiting will always lead to opportunity. When you wait on God, my brother, my sister, there will always be opportunity. So have an expectation that opportunity will happen. God will organize the opportunity. Not just for the wait, but the result of the waiting. It will, it will result into opportunity. It will result into Holy Spirit support leading you somewhere. Holy Spirit support taking you above the storm. Holy Spirit support where you will see this, that serpent and you will deal with that thing. Or you will see the opportunity with that fish and you will be able to get it. Are you with me? Are you with me? So waiting is opportunity and the result of waiting will always end up in opportunity. That's where you don't just go for every op uh, open door that the devil can give you and the world can give you. But even if there's open doors, you wait. 
and in your waiting, it will result in the opportunity from God. Amen. Amen. For you are the God of my salvation. On you I wait all day. You are the God of my salvation. You are the God that took the initiative for a way to be opened, for me to be set free. You are the God that did all of this. Salvation is not going from hell to heaven. Salvation today to be saved from yourself, to be saved from the thought patterns, to be saved from the sick, to be saved from your hurt, to be saved from the negativity, to be saved from all these and other thousand things. Today, that can happen. And because I know you're the God of opportunity. You're the God of opportunity. Let's say, my God is the God of opportunity. So I have the opportunity to be set free. I have the opportunity to go from strength to strength. I have the opportunity to go from glory to glory into that what he has for me. I have that opportunity. Hello? That's why I will wait. On you I wait all the day. So all the day I'm doing nothing. Just waiting on you. No. <laughs> I can see opportunities. And opportunity is going to rise the whole day. On you I wait. When there's this, I wait opportunity. On this, I wait opportunity. On this, I wait opportunity. Opportunity, opportunity. Because I have a lifestyle. I'm going into that lifestyle. But I understand opportunity is there when I wait. Let's just take a moment, pray in tongues. And either for the one, God's going to give rest. For the one, God's going to do that. For the one, God's going to set free about this. For the one, God's going to align his thoughts. For the one, all this other stuff is going to start to happen. For the one, the faith will rise up. For the one, you will just know opportunity. You must write down. Write down all this opportunity, all these thoughts, these ideas that God is giving you. But write it down. Don't ponder on that now. Don't wait on the opportunity now to happen. And the, the idea of the opportunity take you away from the waiting on him. Write down what you think. Write down. Hello? This opportunity. Whoa, 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 whoa. We will get into that later. But still, I'm with God. Unless God says, no, first go and do. First go and do. Are you with me? Opportunity. So, you remember that one? I've uh, spoken about it 112 times. Um, make as if you didn't hear it before. So I'm studying Greek. You remember that story, studying Greek? Anybody remember the story? Oh, there's two at the back. Thank you. Two, three. Huh. Come claim your pizzas sometime. Okay. What am I saying? I'm praying. I'm a student. I'm in the... I'm studying Greek. So I started to pray in tongues just for a moment. And when I was praying in tongues, now I'm waiting on God for me to really get me into this Greek. Hallelujah. And suddenly, opportunity. And the opportunity is I see this drive, the operate. What do you operate? Driveway. What a freaky word. Driveway. See this driveway with the post box 31A, I think 31A, and two funeral trees, begrafenis boompies. Wat noem ons die goed? Those long trees that in the olden days, there were a lot of them at the graveyards. Wat is goed? Typons. Okay. So, <laughs> stuff. Okay, what am I saying? And I see this. Okay. So, God, I must study Greek. And I pray in tongues. And then this picture just more and more and more and more and more. I said, okay, Lord, what now? Must I just put it here? What must I do? Because this waiting, this praying led to opportunity, it seems to me. And God said, go there. I said, God, how must I find? There is thousands of houses in Bloemfontein. And I just felt God says, go. 
I'm supposed to study Greek. I write an exam tomorrow. Hello. Hello. I was praying for breakthrough in Greek, not praying for a vision to walk out of the Greek and get into my car and drive to whoever where. <sighs> so out we go into my fola. And I said, OK, Lord, where now? And I felt orange high school, lady school. What's I doing? Oranya Macy School. That's cool. OK, so we go there, praying in tongues loud. In my vola, OK, come there, school here, turn to the left. I just felt into it. Turn to the left. I said, oh, Lord, what now? First right. But I was past it. Turn back, first one right. Oh, it's going to be a cool, cool, cool de sac, something like that. Going further, going further, got into that round area, the cul de sac. And I looked to my left, boom, 31A driveway, steep up the two trees. I mean, I just went straight there. <laughs> I said, God, you want to do something here now. So, stopped there, walked up. Now, this is a very lani, lani, lani place. But what am I going to say? As I walk up, God, what are you saying to me? Keep on asking, keep on asking. Not for the same thing, nagging, but keep on asking. When God speaks to you, then speak again and, and be in conversation. Are you with me? There, um, God said, son must give his life to Christ. Uh, Mum and dad restore the, 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 the marriage. Okay, now I'm standing there. Two hours, then the lady came. Now what on earth are you going to tell this lady? You know? So this lady in a very lani car. And uh, at the end, <laughs> good day, I'm so and so and so. Now I must say, I studied Greek and I got a vision. And the Holy Spirit said to me, go. And I just got in the car, and I prayed in tongues, and God led me straight to your house. And, uh, and oh, come on. You know? Well, I tried to say that in a normal way. It didn't work out in a normal way. But I said, and the lady looked at me, and she said, yes, my God, phone me, then we can make an appointment. Immediately I knew. She's just going to say, not interested, thank you. So the next Saturday, I just rocked up there. But then I heard, and I can say it now because, yeah, the husband is in heaven now, I believe, that she was the superintendent, uh, superintendent of Universal Hospital, and the husband was the dean of the medical faculty. Okay, so they will very quickly classify me somewhere. <laughs> and um, so I just went there next Saturday. And... Uh, Knock on the door, sun opened, and the lady came down the stairs and uh, said, I told you, you cannot just come here. You must make an appointment, you know? I just said, uh, God showed me something about your son. And uh, 10 minutes, we must leave. We sat down, and I just started to speak. But there's no word really in my heart. Just that God showed me that God wants to say something to your son. And then when I, you open your mouth, Opportunity. opportunity. But in that whole week, a lot of prayer. In the end of the day, this guy in matric in grade 12 gave his life to Christ. We didn't say amen yet. Then this lady started to speak for two hours. Remember, they only had 10 minutes. And after two hours of really like cracking up, she we took hands, she gave her life to Christ. And uh, I said, I need to speak then to speak to your husband. No, they already separated. He is somewhere. He was staying with somebody. No, I went to him. I mean, God did a major thing. Major, major, major thing. Went there. Um, I want to speak to you. I'm Mr. Van Heiningen. Oh, good day, Professor. Uh, oh, okay, we sit. I told him the story. He looked at me in Afrikaans. He said, Meneer Van Heiningen, <laughs> you don't expect me to believe you. Hey. I laughed. I said, no, I don't expect you to believe me. That is really how it happened. <laughs> and I just felt to speak and say what I feel in my spirit. 
And quite a few times he said, <coughs> okay, thank you, Mr. Van Einigen. Thank you, Mr. Van Einigen. And uh, I just ignored. You know, I just go on, you know, just sat and spoke until at one stage I just felt, God says, that's enough. That's enough. And I left it there. I prayed for him, and I, and I went. And, um, but this is all after I just started <laughs> to pray in tongues about getting a breakthrough for my Greek. Hello. Be careful when you pray. Because in your waiting, God can, can mess up your agenda. God can mess up what you're busy, what you're doing now. You were waiting for this to happen. And in your waiting, God pushed his agenda in front of you. Are you with me? You're waiting for that, and then this here in front, he put this. Hello? So, bottom line, it went very well with the Greek and the Hebrew. Now, if you struggle, don't go and lead people to the Lord and think, now you will know everything in your studies. No, no, no. But God help me in the Greek and the Hebrew. But there was a certain opportunity just suddenly with a waiting. Take the opportunity. When you feel miserable, when you feel this, or when you feel, when you're excited, when you're excited about doing something, remember the waiting. Remember the waiting. Because in the waiting, the opportunity will become clearer and clearer and clearer. Or it will start to disappear, disappear, disappear. But do the waiting, and opportunity will rise. Opportunity will rise, and you will just know this is God, this is not. This is God, this is not. But don't sit there until you hear what you want to hear, left or right. And God has nothing to do with left or right. Let's just stand here a little bit, or let's just park here a little bit and do this and do that. And you feel like, how can this be? Hello? And sometimes you could even think, but is this now the devil taking my attention away? Remember we said Sunday, God, I want, can I have ice cream or, or, or custard? And all that you hear is, eat your beans. Oh, this is the devil interrupting because I'm trusting the Lord. Ice cream, custard, ice cream, custard. And I'm praying in tongues till I will hear ice cream and custard, or custard and I will hear the testimony. Or the other option, both. You know. <laughs> But, uh, and then I just hear beans, meat, beans, spinach. Ah, oh, get behind me, Satan. Yeah, for some of you guys, you will say that when you must eat some of that. Sisa. But bottom line, what am I saying? The opportunity, when you wait on me and you speak to me, I will tell you what's the opportunity that's priority right now. And that is eat your beans and your spinach and your meat. Like a father, man, speaking to a son. Are you with me? So understand opportunity, not as a stumbling block. Understand opportunity that suddenly you will come into agendas that God will, that will, God will say, let's first sort out this, or, or go and do this. Seek the kingdom, the rest will follow. In your waiting, the rest will follow. But getting to this, what I'm telling you now, because the answer will come in a progressive way. Amen. Okay. Then, number six. Number six. Number six. You're writing? Behavior. You will have certain behavior. Because of what? Because of your prayer life. Because of what you think. Because of your attitude, because of your level of faith, because of the opportunities in front of you, you will have a certain behavior. For those who don't realize it yet, the one is building on the other one. Okay? The one, what we're talking about. When you must look at your behavior, first look at the previous five principles. Don't just try to change your behavior. Okay? Behavior. Behavior. But suppose... All right, Matthew 24, you can write there, Matthew 24, verse 48 to 50. But suppose that servant is wicked and says to himself, my master is staying away a long time. And he then begins to beat his fellow servants. 
That's not Peter Jones, hey? No, okay. Beat his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with drunkards. The master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him. He will not understand the waiting because of his behavior. Because he couldn't wait. In his waiting, he said to himself certain things. Be careful when you wait. I don't know if you rea uh, realize that. I, I've realized that in my life many times. I wait for a certain breakthrough. I trust God for certain things with people or some things in family or some things in myself. And if it doesn't happen, oh man, I can sometimes get an attitude. I don't see certain opportunities. And I start to get, can get easily a certain behavior. Pray for me. Not for you. You have the breakthrough in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, okay. <laughs> don't care? Okay. So... Be careful what you say to yourself when you wait. And when you're supposed to have patience, be careful what you say to yourself. Be careful what you say to yourself when you have certain behavior. Is it with me? Aram, you didn't hear it. I say, make sure <laughs> what you say to yourself because you will start to have a certain behavior. Are you staying away? Ah, who can give me another one? I don't have it yet. He said, my master is staying away. There was another guy also with the, with the name M. My master or... Oh, come on. Moses. How do we say? Not guns and roses, but God and Moses. Okay, now, Moses. You, uh, uh, guys, Moses is staying away quite a long time. So let's speak to one another. He's staying away a little bit long, you know? So uh, what about a golden calf? What about a golden calf and we do some other stuff? Some other rubbish. In the waiting, in the waiting, in the waiting. Moses, is, he's gone. They said to one another, and you can produce your golden calves when you start to speak to yourself and start to speak to one another. A lot of rubbish. And not like bad stuff, but Making your own plans. Making your own plans. Follow your own logic. They followed certain logic. Let's do all the wrong stuff, guys. No. <laughs> They're gone. He's gone. What now? What we used to and what we saw so many times in Egypt. Let's, yeah, let's do something at least. We cannot just sit around here. Come on. Let's do something. You sit around. You just speak to yourself. You're going to start to create golden calves in your heart and with your hands at the end of the day. Are you with me? Get rid of that golden calves by, first of all, be careful what you say to yourself, say to others. Be careful. Your behavior in your waiting. Moses on the mountain and this servant with his master. My master is staying away. Okay. You became imitator, imita, ima, imitators. Oh. 1 Thessalonians 1, verse 6 to 10. 1 Thessalonians 1, verse 6 to 10. You became imitators, for you welcomed the message, doki, 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 and to wait for his son from heaven. You start to imitate in discipleship those who are walking with Christ. And you welcomed the word. If the word is welcome with you, my brother, my sister, if the word of God is welcome with you, you will wait for his son from heaven. This is what the scripture is saying. It's actually awesome. It's actually awesome. You will wait for the son of God from heaven. If the word of God is welcome with you. But if negativity is welcome with you, you can wait. Because some other demon of negativity... Some other demon of depression. Some other demon of pessimistic whatever. Some other thing is waiting. You, if the message is welcome, the type of language of that type of demon, if that type of words are welcome with you, you can wait. Not for his son from heaven, but some other demon from hell. Assigned to you. 
some other demon from hell that will suit the type of talk that you have. Because a certain type of message, message of f suddenly finding fault with this and always finding fault with that. Easy to judge, easy to criticize, easy to just open your mouth and say whatever you want. That message that you that is welcome with you, it will draw some other demon from hell. Bottom line. Because in the true, if it's the word of God that is welcome with you, the son from heaven will be welcome. You can expect him in tomorrow, but ultimately at the end of the day, at the end of the world. So he will come. What is your behavior? And then lastly with that one, creation waits for, has a certain op uh, behavior, sorry. Creation waits in eager expectation. What behavior do you have? You have an eager expectation. Don't have an expectation. Let there be excitement in your expectation. Let there be intensity in your expectation. Let there be emotions in your expectation. Oh, man, there can be emotions when you have an expectation that nothing's going to happen. There can be emotions in your expectation when you feel everything's going to fail. There can be emotion in your expectation. I know when you think nothing's going to change. Woo! But put some emotion in your expectation about Christ coming, about that what God has for you. Put some emotion in that expectation. Don't fear the disappointment. Don't fear. Because you're honoring him with that eagerness in your expectation. Honor God. With, let's say, I will honor God with the eagerness in my expectation. Okay, creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God, the sons of God to be revealed as we also wait eagerly, eagerly. There's intensity out there. There's some guys in the fake, they call it the aura. There's an aura around that tree. There's an aura in that valley, you know, there's a certain presence that's the fake ten rand, but there's a true ten rand. And actually, you can go into creation and say, God, help me to see something about the groaning expectation. When you see that awesome sunset, sunrise, my brother, my sister, when you see those mountains, when you see those valleys, when you see the tree, when you see those animals, when you see the sea, when you see the sea, yeah. Hello. Said, Holy Spirit, open my eyes, open my eyes, so that I can experience something of the eagerness in creation to see you for the revelation of who you are, where, where. Creation is waiting for the revelation of who you are, where, in you and me. With eager expectation for the revelation of the Sons of God. But the sons of God will never become sons of God. They will never mature. They will be childish. It will be going just about themselves and whatever they want in their prayer life and attitude because they didn't receive this or that, 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 that. that. But creation will be liberated, will be set free. If the crown of creation take up their place again when they were created as the crown of creation when they go back into that calling as sons of God in the son of God when they grow up when we grow up to be mature creation will be liberated that's why you will go into a place when you become more and more mature you will walk in with the authority of God and the atmosphere will change the atmosphere will change. That's why the witch doctors and the this and the that and the mamparajuaras can go into a place and with the offering and all the rubbish happening, suddenly the whole place is a dryness. There's a, there's a, you experience a certain spirit, but even in the whole region, so a lot of rubbish happening. And there's testimonies I remember from long ago, some books with, that talked about the, 
a lot of evangelism, especially in Natal. And uh, this one specific valley, because but there were a lot of obviously uh, was a tour doctor, yeah, witch doctors and all those guys, and the the main guy, chief, gave his life to Christ, and everybody started to to serve Christ, and they started to hear about spiritual warfare, and they started to worship God, and and everything changed. And in a time of famine, the other villages came and got food from these guys. Got food. They found water. A lot of stuff happened. I remember that testimony. I can't just remember who it was. But uh, all I'm saying is it's supposed to be like that. That we take authority. That the, what is happening must listen to us. The, the winds and the storm. We must be amazed that it's Christ. But it's Christ in you that must calm the storm. And say, be still. In nature. In nature. Guys in, uh, in uh, Australia. Different time, different book. Can't remember who. A lot of rubbish happening. But, and the jackalas. Um, what you call it in English? What's good? Foxes. The foxes. Eating. And it's like a plague. Eating all the, the sheep's lamb, the lamb, thank you, the lamb of the sheep. And then God told them, take a map and draw. Remember the, this, this testimony, a few guys, maybe one, two, three. Draw a red line as in representing the blood on the f line of the fence of your farm. And they did it with prayer. And the next day, they drove to see what happened. Not because of the prayer. They just went, as usually every day. They didn't expect necessarily a major thing to happen, especially not at the fence. They found something like 13 to 15 or more, let me not say more, of these foxes as they wanted to enter at the fence, laying dead. Dead, dead, dead. 13, 15, I don't know, more. I think it was more. Dead. Nothing that they can see. Why? Hello. <laughs> Hello. In the natural world, creation eagerly awaits for you to rise up in Christ. But then you must have an eager expectation for Jesus Christ, the Son of God, to rise up in you. And if he will rise up in you, creation that is waiting for you, you will rise up as sons of God and liberate creation and bring liberty and freedom to the nations, to the city. Because you enter the city, things change. You remember those men of God in Europe, especially? When they would enter that city and everybody, a lot of people will just fall to their knees and come to repentance. Who's that guy? We appear. <sighs> I asked you three years ago also. Um, but the, the presence of God will just be there. And suddenly nobody is buying booze. Is that the thing? Uh, you know, those stuff. Okay. Nobody is buying that and certain places are just closing down. But the guy didn't preach yet. He just entered the city. Hello. May God help us. But I'm saying to you prophetically today, my brother, my sister, you're going to see that. In the future, you're going to see that. When the suns arise, how creation will be liberated where they move. Let's cry about that. Okay. May God help us. Creation waits. Our men, there's opportunity. But they also be because of your behavior. Your behavior is going to be different. If you understand this, you're going to have a certain behavior. Now, when you behave in a certain way, when I behave in a certain way, disrespectful, disrespectful, and I behave like that again, and I behave like that again, number seven, what will happen? It will become your habit. Last one. It is that you have a habit of waiting. You know, that guy has this habit of always starting to do this. That one just has this habit of getting negative about this or getting this. 
That guy always have this habit to start to feel depressed and sorry for himself. That guy, hello? So habit is when this starts to control you. The waiting on God must start to control your life. The waiting on God must start to control your life. Prayer as a lifestyle, prayer is starting to control your life. The thoughts of God starting to control your life. The attitude that is from heaven starting to control your life. Your faith is starting to control your life. The faith that kind of faith that pleases God. Hebrews 11.6. Amen? Opportunities from God is starting to control you. Oh, what a crisis in hell. Your behavior is start to come in line with God's behavior. If I can say like that. Oh, man, that's very awesome heavenly habits. Let's say I'm going to get heavenly habits. Now, let's say if I believe it. I'm going to have heavenly habits. No habits from hell. Tell your neighbor, no habits from hell. Ah, doch, man. Okay. I give you two verses, then we are finished with that. Hallelujah. For sharing the word. Amen. Habit. One thing, everybody know that one. One thing. I ask of the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Ich, I will dwell in the house. You sit in the church the whole day, every day of your life till you die. No, that's not what it means. I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek Him. Seek Him. Him. In your waiting, you will seek Him because you have an expectation to see Him because your hope is in the Lord. You wait on the Lord. So to seek Him is putting effort in, in that line. To seek Him in His temple. To seek Him in His temple. To seek Him in His temple. You can sense the presence of God. But then you must seek Him. In his presence, you must seek to see him in his, when you experience his presence. Because the Holy Spirit's presence is there. And he will not, God is, will not in a cheap way reveal himself to you. It will, keep, it will cost you, not performance. But that you put that effort in, in the seeking. It is a waiting with a focus. I seek him. I wait with a focus. I wait with a focus. The attitude bring a focus. The faith bring a focus. And waiting with focus, we call that word in the Bible, seeking. Seek him. Seek the kingdom. Amen. But if I have the wrong attitude, I, I will focus on the moment when that guy makes a mistake. See, he's always like that. He didn't change. <laughs> I have a certain expectation, certain attitude. I can focus in because I know that guy is going to do that again. When he starts to speak in that line, I know he's going to do. Hello, that's like hell. Seeking the opportunity for that moment of weakness so that he can nail, try to nail you. Oh, and luckily he has two brothers to help him. Maybe, hopefully, not me and you, in Jesus' name. The church is going to get into a place of maturity not to fight one another with a lot of rubbish always. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I mean, get into a different habit, okay? I ask of the Lord. This is what I seek. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord. Oh, you are in this house. You are in this temple. Uh, no, in this temple, there can be thieves. In this temple, there can be robbers. In this house, it will be his presence. In his house, I seek him. I sit with him. He can be in my house, but I'm in the kitchen busy the whole time. With this, this, this. Martha, Mary chose the better. Because she was sitting at the feet, she was focusing, she was seeking what he is saying. Are you with me? And that doesn't mean sit here and do nothing, but it's where you are. It was in the kitchen, man, where the lady wrote the song, I love you, Lord. Hey? 
And then God took the song of the kitchen and put it on the lips of the, of the church in all the nations. Ah, oh, come on. Are you with me? So you seek him. Wherever you are, you seek him. Hallelujah. Last one. So be alert. Everybody say be alert. We talked about this quite a few Sundays 20 years ago. Be alert. Give strict attention. You remember? This is amplified. Right there. Give strict attention. Come on, write it. Write it or, or punch it in, in your cell phone. Be alert. Give strict attention. Further in brackets. Be cautious. Be cautious. Be cautious. Not skeptical. Hello. Not skeptical with a pessimistic negative attitude. Be cautious. Because I just want to go with what God is saying. Be cautious. And active in faith. And active in faith. That is what it means to be alert. Awesome, eh? A little bit more. Because the devil can also be alert. You know, when you, I don't know about you, but when I was in trouble when I was uh, very young, then you can be very alert for when mom and dad is going to rock up. You have a very alertness in you. Not my children, they are just holy. But, um, but when I was young, yeah, be alert. So when we would do, me and my brother, he was my first disciple. When I got a very good spanking for discipling him in some stuff. But so many times he must watch. And other times I must watch. We know when you go into the press gang. What is the drug gang? The drug gang. Where all the cows go in one by one. You don't know about that, hey? Beyond you. You know, there's a lot of pipes on the one side, a lot of pipes on the other side. You chase the cows in here, and then there's a place where they go higher up, and then they walk into the truck. Okay, now that thing. So we, we did gymnastics, man. That's all that we did. So you go, and then you must go, and you must start to run. So we were able later to run on this, and then back on that one, or here, and then jump to this one, and do this. Oh, man, I will kill my son if he does that, you know. <laughs> it was not good. It was very naughty. Um, watch. Um, be alert. So, Yuan, around the corner, while I'm practicing. And when he's practicing, I'm watching if my mom or dad or my grandfather is coming from the house in that direction. Um, oh, man. You can be alert in a lot of rubbish, even in a lot of naughty ways. But you need to be alert. Give strict attention. Cautious and active in your faith. Active in your faith. Remember, we see by faith. We see by faith. We see by faith. To be alert, you need faith. Not alert to see what is going to happen in the circumstances so that you can fear. Not alert so that you can see, oh, there's a 666. Not be alert because this is going to happen. First of all, be alert to see by faith what God is doing and what he's going to do. Be alert for that. Rubbish can happen, but you wait on the Lord. You wait on the Lord. Because what you see, you want to see by faith. Amen. You're going to see what the world cannot see, what the nations cannot see, the church will see. Too many times the church couldn't see by faith. That's for you. Therefore, many times things in the world happen, and then we run to the Lord. Things happen in your circumstances, and then we run to the Lord. Thank God for His grace that we can still run to Him, and He will answer us, and He will give us the breakthrough by grace and forgiveness through the blood. Amen. But still, my brother, we're going to grow up. We're going to mature in Jesus' name so that we can get out there. Hello. And make the difference. Be alert. Give strict attention. Be cautious. Active in faith. For you do not know which day. Whether near or far, your Lord is coming. In your waiting, because you don't know, because you don't know, we are waiting sometimes to know. 
I'm waiting so that I can understand, so that I can know when what is happening. But in your waiting, as a lifestyle, in your waiting as a habit, when it becomes a habit, you have this capacity that, hello? If it's going to happen or not, my way, I have this habit of waiting. And I don't know. And sometimes, many times, we can feel frustrated because we don't know. If I can just only know when this is going to happen. At 37 years old, if I can just know if I'm now going to get married or not going to get married. But God, I accept if I must be a Paul, then it's okay. But are you with me? I think my waiting then, I just, at that stage, is no wife, most probably. Hello. No. But what am I saying? My brother, my sister, please. Many things today, you are sitting here, you don't know when. Come on. Can you make a list of things? I don't know when this is going to happen. I don't know when the child. I don't know when the wife or the husband. I don't know when this financial breakthrough. I don't know about a better job. I don't know when my calling certain things going to happen. I don't know when this. I don't know. I don't know. It's okay not to know as long as when it happens that you are doing it with him, with him, with him, that you will wait on him. Because if him is not giving you that guy, if him is not giving you that lady, if him is not opening that door, you don't go through the door. You don't wait for a door to open. You wait for the door of the sheep to be there, Jesus Christ. Amen.